I'm Matt Nasehi, uh, today's host for the uh, Alumni FX Virtual Speaker Series uh, 2024 uh, program. Uh, I'm Director of Energy Innovation at the PTRC Sustainable Energy, and also I proudly belong to the alumni of the University of Regina. I graduated many, many years ago, uh, more than a decade ago, and uh, but I still work very closely with uh, research scientists and the uh, professors at the University of Regina that are conducting great research in the field of energy and environment. <clears throat> I really enjoyed my time uh, at the U of R. Um, over the next hour, you will hear from uh, alumna, Dr. Marzia Kamali, a leader in geothermal energy research. Before I introduce Marzia, I'd like to make uh, land acknowledgements. I, uh, I'd like to acknowledge that the University of Regina is situated on the territories of the Nehai Yawak, Anish Ayapaik, Dakota, Lakota, and Nakota, and the homeland of the Métis Michif Nation. The University of Regina is on Territory 4 lands with presence in Territory 6. Uh, the University of Regina's Alumni Relations Department is pleased to be able to offer the Alumni Effect Speaker Series virtually. Uh, this is my first time hosting this program, um, but uh, and and I am very very honored and proud to be uh, to be asked to do that today. Uh, I hope that your time with us today inspires you to return for future sessions as well. I would like to point out that these sessions are being recorded and will be posted on the U of R alumni website so that uh, you can watch the presentations again or share them with your friends and family. You'll see the link to the alumni website in the uh, chat if you like to access the video later on. Um, okay, now uh, it's my great pleasure to introduce our April speaker, in the University of Regina's 2024 Alumni Effect Virtual Speaker Series, my dear colleague, Dr. Marzia Kamali. Uh, we are very glad that uh, you're joining us. Marzia is passionate about contributing to carbon zero emissions, and I say that, you, you can take my word for it. I've been working with Marzia for over a year now, and she's uh, especially uh, interested and is working very hard in the development of carbon capture, utilization, and storage, and geothermal energy related work that we conduct. Uh, she has a master's degree and a bachelor's degree, both in chemical engineering. Uh, Marzia completed her PhD studies in the petroleum systems engineering program at the University of Regina on fabrication of polymer microstructures carrying renewable energy via a microfluidic system applicable to enhance water recovery. I've had the pleasure of working with Marzia since she joined PTRC in January of 2023, when she started her internship with the company as a part of her postdoctoral work. Today, Marzia will discuss education journey and her experience navigating her career. Uh, just to let you know that following her presentation, we'll have about 15 minutes or so for a Q&A questions and answer session. We invite you to submit questions for Marzia in the chat and I'll read them to her. Um, <clears throat> you're uh, welcome to leave your cameras on for the duration of the event, but uh, please note that your microphones will be turned off uh, will be muted um, till the end of the presentation. If you like to ask a question live at the end of the presentation, please just use the raise hand function at the bottom of your screen. Okay, now I will turn the floor over to Dr. Marzia Kamali to introduce herself. Thank you so much, Matt. Uh, my name is Marzia Kamali. I'd like to thank each and everybody uh, attending this talk today and dedicating their lunchtime. 
it's so precious to me and uh and before introducing myself continuing to introduce myself i'd like to extend my appreciation to university of regina and university of regina alumni especially uh alexis mcquen alumni relations officer for generously asking me to be part of the alumni effect series April edition 2024 and coordinating and promoting this talk. And I myself would like to, uh, to acknowledge our university situated on 34 lands with a presence in 336. I appreciate Matt again uh, from Petroleum Technology Research Center, Sustainable Energy for accepting to be the moderator of my talk. So, Back into back to introducing myself. I'm currently working as a postdoc fellow at the University of Regina and also working as an intern at Petroleum, Techno uh, Petroleum Technology Research Center. So if I want to talk about like a more personal interest, I can say that I'll, I'm a person like to share my knowledge and uh, what I've learned through the years uh, to anybody would would like to hear or know about it and I'm also passionate of uh, learning from from others like uh, learning anything they can offer me and uh, and I, 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 I believe that exchange of knowledge is an uh, inseparable part of a success in any, any aspect of the life so and uh, as it obvious from the the career paths that I've taken so far, I'd love to par be part of the, the movement toward reducing the human footprint in global climate change and also the environmental impact uh, they have, the human beings, and be part of the solution, actually. Um, yes, this is the introduction from, from me. Okay, great. Thank you very much, Marziet, for your introduction. Um, I have a few questions, of course, uh, prepared a few questions for this uh, uh, session. And I will start with uh, asking you uh, what actually inspired you to pursue a career in, in petroleum technology, in energy, and in geothermal energy? Okay. Yeah, thank you, Matt, again. Uh, as my, Matt mentioned in my background, uh, like uh, in, in introduction about my background, just repeating the same information. And I'm saying I I I, I did my bachelor uh, and master's of science uh, in chemical engineering back in my home country, Iran. And uh, uh, like uh, the journey coming into energy and energy saving start when I finished my master's. I joined energy storage research lab at Shiraz University in Iran under supervision of uh, Dr. Karimi in Iran. And I, uh, I just joined that uh, lab to be a research assistant and learning more about the polymer fiber fabrication. And uh, because the, the fiber fabrication was kind of related, to, it was it was like a side of my master's degree. I, I finished my master, but I had that question, how fi fiber fabrication can happen? So I, I joined to get more extra information and, uh, and look if finding out about the concept. So, um, but in the lab, I got very interesting information um, and getting familiar with interesting source of renewable energy known as phase change materials or PCMs. So uh, I got a great knowledge about the PCM encapsulation in polymer fibers and also producing PCM composites and how they can be used for energy storage and retrievement. So anybody, I, I don't want to expand more on this topic, but anybody that is like interested to know more about the PCMs and how they can be used in uh, materials synthesis or energy storage type thing, I can, I can share uh, tons of information with them. So, Okay, and then I, in 2017, I came to Canada to pursue my PhD uh, and under Dr. Trabi, Farshi Trabi supervision from Petroleum System Engineering. I'm so thankful of him uh, for accepting me to start my PhD. So um, uh, 
in my view, always I thought that chemical engineering is is a source. Uh, maybe it's kind of biased, but it's, it, to me, it's a source or at least a part of some major engineering field. So including an example is petroleum engineering. So uh, how I led to petroleum engineering, it was I, I took a chance to challenge myself to get on board on a field of a study to get the, like a, like petroleum to get some more extra knowledge and maybe be able to apply what I've learned from past that even in this field. So and I really did it and. Um, I was thinking that how even in a in an industry like petroleum, how I can apply the source of renewable energy to to be to to be utilized for enhancing oil recovery. So and, uh, and I just combined the knowledge of knowing about the P PCMs and make a fabrication of polymers and then using those those knowledge into petroleum. So, and I got, uh, and I, I, I kind of accomplished uh, making those PCM polymer composite and uh, created uh, the polymer microstructure and encapsulating PCM to be used uh, and to, 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 to store energy and also release energy and uh, apply in uh, EOR. So, and now how I got uh, and end up to be a, like a working in geothermal. Again, I'm saying that it's all the same, that my passion about knowing more about the sustainable source of energy, renewable source of energy was like a led to this geothermal project. And it's like, a they are all the same. I got the knowledge in petroleum and I, I thought that it's all like a petroleum engineering and geothermal are all uh, founded on the same base and ground. You got the knowledge, you can use it. You can use it in geothermal energy. The petroleum are the same. Then like a well drilling, the reservoir characterization and modeling, all of those stuff can be transferred easily. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. Thank you, Marzi. And and yes, that's very true. Uh, I mean, in terms of uh, the knowledge uh, and the experience that you gain over during your education and studies and uh, you know, uh, research that he do in uh, in petroleum and subsurface related aspects of it is all very relevant to other, uh, you know, fields such as uh, geothermal energy. Now, let me ask you this question about geothermal energy. Um, how do you actually see uh, the research that you do in, in geothermal modeling? Uh, how does that contribute to uh, carbon zero emission uh, goals. Okay, that's a very, very interesting question. And I just like to answer this question with providing some definition for some people that have, like a, like me before that had a preliminary information about geothermal energy. And also I'm gonna give some information about geothermal in Saskatchewan. So geothermal energy is known as the energy store in a form of heat beneath the surface of the Earth's crust. So this energy is clean, sustainable, widely available, and most importantly, reliable source of energy. So what, what does it mean? It means that it's not affected by the weather condition and nor what time of the day you are using this energy. So, and very important point about the geothermal energy, you can consider this source of energy as, as almost zero CO2 emission source of energy. Uh, in Saskatchewan, uh, the power generation is basically the coal fire power plants and space heating and water heating is happening um, like, a, like a, the demands have been fulfilled by burning natural gas. So as we all know that that GHG or the greenhouse gas emission have been a huge, huge concern recently. So geothermal is definitely an alternative energy option uh, because of, again, the two important and great feature that it has, like a being categorized as a renewable and sustainable source of energy, and also having a very marginal environmental footprint. So 
Geothermal energy uh, can be exploited in two different ways. You can use the geothermal heat uh, for uh, uh, power or electricity generation, and you can use for the heating purposes. So all around the world, there are different, uh, there are two major source of um, uh, uh, geothermal energy extraction that they are volcanic and sedimentary uh, basin environment. Okay, now talking about the Canada. So uh, in Canada, uh, in uh, part, uh, in, in Western Canadian, we have a Western Canadian sedimentary basin is an example of sedimentary basin uh, that, uh, that can be applied for the geothermal. And I, I can, I'm gonna talk about it now. So uh, the Western Canadian sedimentary basin, if you wanted to imagine, it's a formation to start from a covering uh, um, some of the provinces. Uh, so start from uh, the British Columbia, Alberta, and then we have the Southern of Saskatchewan and going to the um, Southwestern of Manitoba. So it's gonna, it's the, in the thickest and deepest in a, uh, west wedges of this basin and it's getting shallower and also thinner as we go toward the east. So, and, um, but um, uh, the, uh, and from this basin, we have two formation aquifers and they are very well known for being very high permeable and high prose kind of aquifers. So the city of Regina is favorably located on top of this formation. It means that we can we can take advantage of this energy for direct heating. And uh, as we know that geo, it's like a, um, um, the government of Canada is moving toward having a plan to move to our net zero emission goal. So geothermal energy exactly aligned with this point. And uh, so, as I said, this Western Canadian basin can provide the energy that the community overlying this formation can take advantage and get and get the the, the heat they need. And uh, and um, this this prairie province, Saskatchewan, is uh, one of the places that take advantage of this. So, and uh, if I wanted to talk, uh, and and one point that I wanted to just um, talk about it. It's the, the geothermal energy can be used for different uh, purposes, like a municipality and industrial uh, and, um, and like a public to just, and they can, it can help to significantly reduce GHG emission and, uh, and it's tied to replace of natural gas and electrical heating. So just coming, talking about our own research here in the University of Regina, um, my research under supervision, Dr. Gia and Dr. Weva from Energy System Engineering Program is um, focused on building a geological model for Deadwood and Winnipeg aquifers to extract hot water and uh, we did some study for uh, for some shallower aquifer as well, but uh, this study is based on uh, on um, a system well known as uh, like a doublet system. It's comprising uh, two wells, one production and one injection. The well heads are are like uh, usually close to each other, but from the bottom hole, they are just being separated and deviated uh, at least a kilometer away each other. So I am responsible for the subsurface modeling, but part of our research group is very like a, including very brilliant students. They are, and professors from other programs. They are working on the surface design and, uh, and uh, doing very interesting topics like uh, incorporating even heat pumps with geothermal. Yes. I think it was a very long answer, but it was. It was no, that's, that's very true. Honestly, as you were answering, uh, I kept thinking how important uh, this work is. And honestly, uh, just remember that this work has started decades ago at the yeah. University of Regina, actually. Exactly. And Wells will drill actually here on the campus for that purpose. So, you know, absolutely. So U of R has been on the 
forefront to great research always. And this is continuation of that, the, the great work that uh, is being done right now, uh, you know, in which you're involved and, and many of the good professors at the University of Virginia are also. Uh, another question I wanted to ask you a little bit outside the technical details of your work, just wanted to ask you overall, what challenges have you encountered during your postdoc work and over the past year or so? And, you know, though, how, how did you deal with that and how did you address those challenges? Okay, for sure. Um, well, one of the challenges, or if you just look at it, like if, if I myself look at it from other perspective, I, I really find find any challenge as like a great opportunity and it was a great opportunity for me when I was when I started working as a postdoc I got involved um, doing more geological simulation and getting familiar with the topic like geothermal in more depth uh, as I mentioned I did my PhD mostly in doing experiment and working in, in labs. So my background information on geothermal was very preliminary and I didn't have that much insight how beneficial and how worldwide well-known these technologies is as, as Matt said. So I, I, I really feel fortunate to have uh, so many experts and mentors around me when I, I would join PTRC and also working with a professor in uh, University of Regina. So including our COO, Eric, Eric Nickel, Brian Bronsiskel, he is a geologist that uh, he was involved in the uh, geothermal uh, energy uh, uh, very first time in Regina, the, the well drill on campus, he was he was involved. And also Matt, uh, our director of energy innovation, Zainab Mubahedzadeh, the project manager, and Mars Liu, project leader and R uh, and R and D technical advisor. Just all of them honestly, they helped me to catch up and let me uh, deep a toe in the water and learn. So I, I I can say that um, learning new stuff like uh, like geology, figuring out geological feature of Saskatchewan, subsurface, but another practice or challenge for me. So I myself like very very believe that reaching out to the expert, asking for the time, just uh, and asking the question, sharing the concern, and sharing the even ideas about some some topic, and at the same time putting all the efforts for achieving a goal can can do the work. And I, I and I can say that it worked for me. Absolutely, and and you know I uh, also think you know it's really important for someone to be able to step out of their comfort zone yes. and enter new areas yes. and be good at it. So I think to some extent, that's what you did. I absolutely agree that what you learned, uh, you know, was relevant absolutely during your education and your university education and all of that. But being able to apply that to a real uh, world uh, applications and as I said, you know, stepping out of your comfort zone and you know, step into new areas. That that's absolutely uh, an important thing to do. And and you you've done it so well. Thank you. You know, so and much. I know from experience. Yeah, I worked you. with you over the past year, so I I I can uh, I can uh, say that with uh, great confidence. Thank um, you. So yeah, absolutely. And uh, you know. Um, Wanted to also uh, ask you uh, if you could please discuss any um, experiences or insights gained during your PhD studies that have been particularly valuable in your career. Oh, yeah, sure. So um, when I'm thinking about the PhD study or a little research, is like a PhD is kind of people can relate to that just to get this student around now is a complete journey and when you're writing a thesis actually you are putting a lot of blood sweat and tears so um mm -hmm. so it's especially it was very hard for me and some of my friends during the time that uh, like uh, it was challenging because the phd our study just overlapped with COVID time so 
that it's like you're putting aside the COVID time and everything that and whatever we learned from that time. So I can say that when uh, when you start working or just talking to myself and you start working on a research, you may have uh, done millions of literature reviews or going into like a so many papers and like you're saying to yourself that okay I found it I'm gonna go to the lab and I just do it and wrap it up in less than a month but when you actually go and launch your work you will see definitely that those approaches in somehow doesn't work for you mm -hmm. so it was so and and then you're gonna realize that you are left alone with so many questions and also some like it definitely fears about what's gonna happen next so i i i thought i am uh, but i i can i can say that i i figure out that everybody can pave their own way as i did i found my like a, i stuck million times and I just like I learn from those failures and I'm saying that really it's a point for me that uh, in every failures there is a lesson to learn and it happened for me and every time I just like I trusted that that failure and I just the, the next the day after I just try to go around those problems or just find a new way so and uh, so this is this is one insight that I got, like a learning from the failure, and also not turning down any opportunity for learning. Just learning is like a, you shouldn't be afraid of uh, a new things. It's like a you knowledge you get the knowledge, and I think and I I think that sustainability can even apply to a knowledge. So you can you can't lose a knowledge. You have it. You have it, and you are you gonna use it someday, definitely. And you have that knowledge, and you are building upon building on that knowledge, and also in a in a in a in a certain pace. So we can say that knowledge is sustainable again. So and beside the energy, beside the material, knowledge is can be included as a sustainable form. So now I'm using. So when you are learning, you are actually for me it's like a creating a toolkit so toolkit can be used like a further down of your path so i learn about petroleum i learn about the pcm i use it in my phd i learn about petroleum engineering and i used it for geothermal energy yeah okay very good yes absolutely and uh, and as you said you know uh, you you never stop learning uh, I couldn't agree with you more on that. Uh, you know, it's always something new that you learn and uh, and being able to, as you said, changing and turning um, disappointments or failures into lessons that help you succeed into, <laughs> into uh, you know, next things that you uh, you encounter. That, that's very true. Thank you very much for that answer. Uh, Marzia, could you also share your experience um, transitioning from academia uh, to your role as a professional at, at the PTRC, please? For sure. And here I can say like 100% that I find myself lucky to start my professional career with a Petroleum Technology Research Center sustainable energy team. Without any hesitation, I can say that there are a group of professionals here working very hard to have impact in the research, in academia, as well as public communities. Petroleum, so if I just maybe some people don't know a lot about the PTRC or Petroleum Technology Research Center, I'm going to give you a brief information. So PTRC is a not-for-profit not cor uh, corporation founded in 1998 and uh, to, with the purpose of facilitating research, development, and demonstration project to reduce uh, the carbon footprint and also increase the production of subsurface energy. So PTRC seeks to support industry, government, and the research private providers. And one like a very proud, um, one of the very proud, proud 
point about PTRC. Um, PTRC is a founder of Aquastore, the largest field uh, lab uh, laboratory to study CO2 storage and measurement, monitoring, and verification technology for CCS. And uh, CO2 is uh, being captured from Unit 3 of Boundary Dam Coal Burning Power Generation Facility, equipped with uh, uh, capture technology at SAS Power. And 10% of the almost 10% of the CO2 is being injected to Aqu Aquas Aquastore, sorry, Aquastore well. 90% is being the, the ca carbon capture is transferred to pipeline to Weyburn oil fill for EOR purposes. So since the beginning of the injection, 588,000 uh, tons have been stored safely and permanently to the depths of 3.4 kilometers below the surface of uh, below the surface to a 250 meter thick sail information. So, and that was uh, that was a, like a very small introduction about the PTRC, but. Honestly, but getting back to that, that question, honestly, this transition occurred uh, in a very exciting way for me. So it opened uh, my horizon to think about more different technology as the source of renewable energies to be able to reduce the CO2 emission. And, uh, and actually, I just let me think how I can, uh, I can apply my thoughts to a real life project. So I got from the beginning. I I I got involved in City of Regina geothermal project, uh, and uh, and I have and uh, and I start learning about that as I said about the geothermal and about the details of it, and it's never stopped single day on learning. And I wanted to do it the same, and maybe just expanding the same knowledge to to other field like maybe computer science. So. I like uh, I like to emphasize that uh, sometimes it can be hard uh, for a graduate student to have a smooth transition from from academia to industry and without entering to a welcoming workplace. And it happens. Uh, I think it happens a lot. But I was I I feel so fortunate that I have experienced it. Uh, with the with feeling of acceptance here in PTRC from all of my colleagues, including our CEO, Rand, and also and a director of communication, Norm Sekuda, who helped me to, to help me to catch up with the pace uh, and the knowledge that like it was like a, the, the company built done. And I'm so grateful for, from, for all of them. Absolutely. And it's been a great pleasure having you uh, you so in much. our team, Marzia, thank you very much. And thank you for your answers, really. And, you know, I I very much uh, appreciate your time today. And, you know, and uh, it was really uh, sort of, you know, it was great to hear from you that you said you wanted to have something to actually be able to make an impact. Exactly. using your studies to turn it into something useful and and you have done so that that is wonderful thank you very much thank you so um much. now it's uh it's time for if there are any questions if i'm i'm looking at the chat box i don't see any questions in the chat box and i don't see any uh hands raised uh and you know uh, so i i think uh you know just wanted to uh, sort of uh, wrap up. I don't see any hands up, as I said. I don't see any questions. Just thank you very much again, Marzia. Thank you very much, everyone, uh, for uh, joining us uh, today. And, um, and you know, uh, a video of today's uh, alumni effect will be uh, posted soon on the alumni section of our website. Uh, a link uh, to our website can be found in the chat. Feel free to share the link with your family and friends. And don't forget to check the University of Regina website for information on upcoming events in this series and more. Our next Alumni Effect event will be on May 21st, 2024, this year, next month. And we'll feature Eli Alquist, uh, President and CEO of Northwest College. We hope to see you all there. Until then, Take care and thank you for tuning in. Thank you. Thank you so much.